Welcome to the Shearwalls online tutorial for the US edition. In this tutorial, we will do an in-depth demonstration of a more complicated example using the three-term versus the four-term deflection equation inside the Shearwall software. Now, let's look at distributing forces within a shear line to three different segments. Instead of looking at the distribution of forces within one segment to two different materials as we just did, here we will look at three segments with wood sheathing on one side and no contribution to shear resistance from the interior sheathing. This model shows a building in plan view of about 30 feet long. Here I want to show you the difference in the deflection calculation of shear line B at the top of the screen when a medium level force, 50% of design capacity, and a high level force, 100% of design capacity is applied. Notice the shear line has been split into five segments. The second and fourth segments, now shown without the blue fill, are non shear walls. This elevation view shows the two segments that are non shear walls in gray and the shear resisting shear walls, which has a height to width ratio or aspect ratio of less than one, are white. I'm going to manually add a factored seismic force applied as a point load parallel to the shear line. You can learn more about this in video 6 on applying loads and forces manually. I am applying this force to the shear line at the top of the screen with a magnitude of 3750 pounds. For the purpose of this example, we will assume a deflection based distribution to calculate rigidity of the shear wall. I will be toggling between the two options to linearize the deflection equation. To start this example, I will set the software to generate results following the four term deflection equation. Note that wall details without any unknowns have been specified for the walls in this project file. So we have added the 3750 pounds force, which is about half of the design capacity of the shear line. You can see in the results shown, which indicates the ratio of the total applied factored shear force on wall divided by the shear capacity for each of the three segments is 0 0.48, 0 0.46 and 0.55 depending on the segment. Remember that shear is distributed to each segment based on equal deflections and not capacity, which is why each segment has a different ratio. Notice in the deflection table that the total deflection of each shear wall segment in shear line B are the same, 0.28 inch, using this four term equation. Switching to the three term instead of the four term deflection equation, the total deflection of the shear line moved slightly to 0.35 inch but still are the same as expected. This makes sense because we have applied a force that is less than capacity, so we already knew we would slightly overestimate the deflections compared to the nonlinear equation. The nature of this total deflection augmentation can be illustrated by the figure C4.3.2, coming from the SpeedWiz 2015 commentary, where a graph shows the comparison between the four term and the three term deflection equation. Now, Let's increase the applied force from 3750 pounds to 7500 pounds to get closer to 100% of the shear design capacity of the wall line. Since deflections are designed using strength level load, which is approximately 1.4 ASD, the deflection following the three term and four term equations will be the same when calculated at 100% ASD capacity as seen in figure C4.3.2. As expected, the total deflection for the nonlinear four-term and the linear three-term deflection equations are virtually identical. 